the Israelites ate three types of food. The first food was the Passover lamb. What the Passover lamb did, the Passover lamb strengthened their walk, strengthened their walk to step out without having a without eating the passover lamb they would not be able to step out in the journey from bondage from darkness towards light from bondage to freedom what helped them to step out is the passover lamb the slain lamb which represents jesus christ when he was slain on the cross for us that helped us to step out strongly it's not just stepping out is stepping out but stepping out with the strength that you won't go back you won't go back and that strength they have received by eating the passover lamb if they would have eaten anything they would have gone back it's similar with us the first a stage of the food that they ate is the passover lamb and then when we see in the exodus when they were in the wilderness they ate a second type of food and that is manna manna means what is it is an unknown it's an unnamed is an unknown unknown thing it came from heaven god gave it from heaven it's like a bread like substance that fell from heaven and it tasted like honey the psalm 78 24 talks about it the israelites would collect a daily portion of manna and double portion before the sabbath because on the sabbath there was no manna it was they have to collect it one day before a double portion and what eating manna did was it transformed them to heavenly people the heaven the heaven food having the heavenly food that's what the word of god is a manna what the word of god does is transforms us every day transforms us more and more transforms us into heavenly people the more you read the word of god the more you will be transformed the more you read the more you will be transformed the transformation came in the wilderness in the journey when they were constantly eating the manna the third thing the third stage is when they reached the promised land when they reached the promised land Joshua 5:12 says the manna ceased there was no manna now one thing i wanted to talk here one thing i wanted to emphasize here when you reach to the promise promised land what you have to do when you reach to the promised land there are three things that you need to do when you reach to the promised land number 1 is you need to sow a seed you need to sow a seed israelites never sowed a seed in the wilderness but when they reached to the promised land they started sowing a seed now the sowing the seed means labor they started laboring they started working previously they were not working for the food they were not laboring for the food now they have to produce their food now they have to sow the seed they have to labor now they have to come to a stage from a stage of wandering to a stage of stagnant labor the second thing that they did we have to do when we reach to the promised land is we need to conquer the land the land won't it will not say oh you have come i'm so happy i appreciate that you came and the land won't be empty for you you have to go and conquer the land sometimes we do a mistake we think that everything will come to my lap it doesn't happen like that 
wish it happens like that if it if it if it happened like that i would not be in here but we need to conquer the land we need to we need to war the first is the labor the second is we need to war a warfare an engaging of the warfare the warfare is a huge concept pray fast decree declare walk in faith blood of jesus binding losing blessing curses courts of heaven and the third is build a tabernacle the first is sow a seed the second is conquer the land and the third is building a tabernacle they built a tabernacle when they reached the promised land the tabernacle represents ministry or service to god so when we reach to the promised land the three things that we need to do is number 1 we need to labor sow a seed number 2 we need to war we need to conquer the land the third we need to serve service build a tabernacle but there was one thing that was done constantly it was the altar the altar but today i'm going to talk about what good god put on my heart is the time when the manna ceased the life changed in one day all the provisions all the supplies that used to come from heaven that you don't have to do anything you just have to go go to the field and you just carry a basket and collect which was which came from heaven put that food in the basket and come back home and just have it so simple but now the world changed the world changed for israelites because the manna ceased there will be a time in our lives or there may be a time right now that you are in where the manna from the heaven will has ceased you come to the field and there's nothing you find because the heaven stopped giving manna to you why heaven was giving manna till the time you have not reached your promised land remember this is the sign the heaven will stop giving you manna when that happens it means you are in your promised land when you when you when you have your inheritance that which god has promised you the heaven will stop providing what we have to do when the manna ceased manna ceasing of manna is not a bad thing the so first of all this we need to note it clearly that ceasing of manna is not a bad thing in india when people we have a lot, lot of salvations every week when people come with salvation is so joy there are this three groups of people that i minister one is new converts they are so happy they are like loving everyone want to forgive everyone if they would every they will go to the offices they will get the jobs they will have this miracles they will have everything is happening to them this is one stage and there are, i deal with second those who are in the wilderness and they are fighting and everything is coming against them the prayers are not being answered they are pressing in and there is a third category they are cold they don't want to do anything they just come and sit in the church done gone they were the people those those uh, these were the people who were in the third stage they were once upon a time in the first stage the service starts at 10 and they are at 6 am in the church knocking the door he said pastor wake up because everything is like so these are the different stages like 
what happens is that when a baby is born, no one allows the baby to throw on the floor. Everybody will carry the baby, clean the baby, even the baby poo, pee, everybody will love it, the smell and everything. It's like, oh, so cute. The baby will spit on you, say, like, oh, sick. The baby will pee on you. When, I, when my son was born, I went to him, see first, he peed on me when I, when I picked him up. And everybody said he's excited to see his dad. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I said, he peed on me. So, but I didn't feel bad. I don't want him to pee on me now. I don't want, but I love him. I don't want to do that. I don't want him to do that. Because you understand what happened. He's the same son, the same father, he's the same pee. That's what when God, when you're born, when you're newly born, God will take you, God will take care of you, and you love the process. What will it happen if you just keep carrying your babies, even though they are 10, 12, and 15 years? They won't grow. There's a point that would come in the life of the parenting that you take that baby and throw on the floor. And the baby wants to stand up, fall down, stand up, because the strength in the bones, the endurance, the walking, the running. That's the stage second two where people are in the wilderness because God just, they feel like God dumped them. No, God is watching them because God wants them to grow strong. That's the stage they were in. And the third stage is like, they're too old, they're cold. They feel like oh, everything is like, they see this Crazy people giving their life and jumping and hopping. Uh, one day you will come to my batch. So, they're like that. I see, I, I deal with three types of people. So when I prepare a, prepare a message on Sunday, I have to prepare for these three categories of people. To revive them. Because that's the, the third stage of people are the very hard, that's a very hard stage. They don't want to do anything. The, the same songs, once upon a time, that they were excited, they stood up, they jumped, they waved, they did. Now they are just sitting. Because those songs are no more ministering to them because their heart is cold. It's very hard. It's a very hard place. And God told me, that's the time that you should love them more than you have loved them in the past. Because what can burn the passion in them is not revival. Because they've seen many revivals, they've seen many blinds, mute, deaf, dumb, dead, woke up. They were a part of that in my ministry. What would revive them is the love. The love revives people. The love of God revives people. And God told me that you need to be consistent in loving them. And those guys that I loved in the time of that never gave up. They are the leaders in my church now, leading people. If we would leave them in that stage and say, hey, you're no more participating in anything. I don't see you in any, in any place. You're not signing up for anything. I think you don't want to do anything with us. I, don't, I think you don't want to do anything with the church. We are done with you. Because as long as you sign up, you are our friend. The day you don't sign up, we don't know who you are. We don't want you to be here. But God said, that's the time that you as a leader need to sign up in their lives. Walk in their lives. Love them. Keep texting them. They won't answer me back. I would keep texting them. They won't answer me. Recently, one man of God said, you chased me five years. I never responded to you. I would barely respond to you. And now I'm chasing you. Because that is the time, that's the time, that's the time when the love is needed the most. That's the time. What happens when the manna ceases? 
what does it represent the first thing it represents it's a good thing it's not a bad thing that means you have come to a place what god has promised you you are on your promised land you are on your promised place the place the land the position because the promise land is not maybe a physical land for me it was a nation no it was not a nation i always thought that my promised land is america it's a nation no god said no take that out of your mind it's not a nation so the promised land what happens when the manna ceases what did israelites do what we have to do when the manna from heaven ceases we have to transition to take ownership we have to transition to take ownership in matthew 25 26 to 28 says but his master answered him you wicked and lazy and idle servant did you indeed know that i reap where i have not sown and gathered grain where i have not winnowed then you should have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming i would have received what was my own with interest so take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents god gives us talents he is the god who gives us talents but ownership is our responsibility you can't take that talent in your hand and you just sit there and the talent will not hatch a egg for you you have to take the ownership to multiply the talent ownership is not taking things to your hand ownership is not taking things to your hand but it is giving up yourself to what is at your hand you have to say this is ownership not this is not ownership this is ownership ownership is not laying new foundations of your own i want to do it my way i've just now i will do it in my way ownership is building upon the foundations which are already laid ownership is not saying that yeah now everything is like i am the one now we are never the one he is always the one ownership is not fighting your way in ownership is not fighting your way in ownership is fighting for make his way in we have to make his way in that is ownership because he owns us and if he kept us there then there is a reason there is a responsibility there is an ownership why he has kept there not taking ownership would be considered as laziness according to proverbs 24:30 and 34 it is the laziness god sees us as why this guy is not taking because he said you lazy servant you have not taken the ownership to multiply your talent i have given you an opportunity it's not that god never gives us opportunity god gives us opportunities but it depends on us how we utilize that opportunity i always tell my kids god gives opportunities it's never that god is partial that he will he will not give you opportunity in this land because you are an asian no it's nothing like that you are from india it's nothing like that god will give opportunity equally to everyone it depends on you how you will utilize that opportunity because that opportunity may look like nothing to us that opportunity may look like too much to us but through that opportunity god would god wants to raise us and give us that honor 
that he wants to give us from a very long time from many years that opportunity that opportunity is very important i always used to carry a flute in my pocket because i was so hungry for stage nobody used to invite me to play a flute i would stand before those those concerts and i would beg to somebody like the host i said i want to play i want to play and they would say no 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 we cannot have you no we cannot have you. i had this like i was playing so good i felt like i want to present it i want someone to listen it's it's i'm just playing by myself nobody listens except my mom my dad and my brother they always say shut up it's too loud <laughs> you just keep playing my dad was you can just keep playing the same song again and again i said this is practice dad this is practice in the practice you keep playing the same thing till you are mastered <laughs> he says whatever you don't know anything except that one song so i would keep playing and playing and nobody but i had no stage nobody used to go. one day i went up to a school in a small school they said there was some show going on in a very small school i walked into the school even though not i was a part of the school the guard in the school chased me he said who are you and i jumped up the wall and i ran because i went there to play the flute i was so hungry just to to demonstrate my skill i was just one day i always carry the flute in my in my pocket like i always carry the flute in my bag it's always there i always have flutes in my car i always have flutes in my restroom i always have flutes in everywhere still now i have a flutes i always carry them i was just carrying and i was riding my bicycle and i was like teenager like 16 somewhere 15 16 and there were these people you know in india you know people like it's like mexico people are everywhere on the streets and there were this there were this gangster this gang they called me that gang leader called me and he stopped my bicycle he said sit here i want you to play the flute i know that you play flute i hear sometimes when i'm just going past by your house people have said you play very well can you play the songs i said yeah i know the songs and i played it and all the gangsters they just clapped and they said wow amazing yeah i don't know whether the new music but i just played i just needed to hear, hear some claps yeah so they just clapped and they just praised me and they gave me one cent they said go and buy a chocolate we love it whenever you pass from here you play there was a big concert going on in a stadium and the con the con the 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 concert manager reached out to me and he said i want you to play the flute because this gangster told him that when the concert takes place because in india what happens is that if you, in one area if you want to do any concert or a meeting or anything even though you have a permission from the government and the cop you cannot do it because the local gangster has to give you the permission it because it's all operated by gangs and especially from where i come it's every area there is a gang like for example if you have a fights in your home the gangster solve the problems if there is any crime happen the gangster will decide the court nobody goes to court they will go to a gangsters so there are gangsters everywhere if you want to do something you need to go and approach a gangster if you want any official work to be done you just tell the gangster and it will be done so the local gangster said that only if you allow that kid to play over there i will <laughs> allow this concert to take happen and that man that manager called me and said see if you don't play i cannot conduct my concert so i got an opportunity to play and from there i got multiple opportunities to play but what is the meaning of this everything is that i was not lazy i always carried a flute with me still now i carry a flute i always have a flute with me every time because i don't know 
when I meet a gangster, <laughs> and when the gangster will tell me to play, and God will open opportunity for me to play. God opened so many opportunities for me to play just by playing on the street corner because I was ready. I never said, I'm not going to play here. I'm not going to do this. You need to always be ready. We don't know. We want an opportunity. And it may look like, what will happen if I play at the street corner with these gangsters? That open door for multiple concerts in my life. At the age of almost like 16, I've started playing on the concerts, the shows, and started to learn a lot of stuff, learned a lot of stuff, then went to pray and played in the Bollywood, was a professional flutist, worked for the All India Radios for many years, worked with many music directors, played in many music albums. Still now, I play for many songs in India, especially the worship songs in India, if you listen. If you listen a flute, majority of the flute pieces, I have played that. Majority of them, majority. I still, people call on me for playing the recordings. I, I, I reduced it last time. I got a call last month to do a complete whole album in downtown Houston. They, they said, we want you to do an album. I said, I don't have time. I don't have time to do that. I'm sorry. I get constant calls from Pakistan, India, and people here to play flute. And the majority of the flute pieces that you, that you listen in the Pakistani music, Indian music, there are only five flutists, professional five, to five flutists, and I'm one of them in India and in Pakistan. So majority of the flute bits I have played. So I mix here, I, I mix my flute and I send the recording and then they take that and they mix it over there. They add the reverbs and everything. I just play dry, dry notes and I send them in my studio and they mix it. So that's how I, that's how I, I do a lot of recordings. So that opportunity may look like it's not an opportunity, but it opened a door. We don't know how God, God would use that. We, I don't know, but how, why, why I bought that? I don't know. Maybe it's an encouragement to someone. The second thing, what happens when the man I seized? You need to learn. You need to learn new things. In Psalm 119, 105 says, "Your word is a lamp." to my feet and a light to my path. is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, your word. When I read the word, it's always like a lamp, it's always like a light, it's always teaches me new things. When I came here, I learned new things. I have to learn new things. We operate in Celsius, it is Fahrenheit. I don't know how much is a Fahrenheit is heat and how much is Fahrenheit is less. I always struggle. But I'm, I'm, I'm now, after two years, I am like, now this is the second year I am here. Like this month I came to US and two years ago and I joined Refuge. I have to learn from, my, from kilometers, I have to shift to miles. And I and my wife and my kids will go to the, this, this Kroger's, this Walmart and we'll say, oh, tomatoes are so cheap, you know. It's like they said, like they say that, 0 0.99 cents they are they write on the on the tomatoes okay that is for each and the each is like very small ea see i we thought can you believe it's so cheap and we used to bring throw the stuff and then we would go the bill would be like 250 300 dollars i like why is this and then my kids would say you know, that, that's what the America is so rich. They, they put taxes. So we thought they're putting taxes, but it, does, but it means we have to see a pound because we don't know how much a pound is. We will take our calculator, turn it from kgs to pound, and pound also is this. We don't know where there is a weigh machine. So we would, we would hold like this. How much is this, do you think? This is like a pound. This is like two pound. But they, then my... Jeshron, my son, explore, found out that there is a weigh machine also that you can weigh it there. We don't know all of these things because we never did this before. So we have to learn. We lost a lot of money. 
we lost lot of money we used to get this letters of scam they saying that this was a scam we don't know because in india we we never had been to a scam they would send us the letters and they would say that your car insurance how do they know if it is a scam they know my car number they know my where the name of my car the number of my car the 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 everything and they would send us a letter and they said you have to pay 400 otherwise your car would be seized oh i was like oh, for 400 dollars and i would pay and then i realized that it was a scam thousands we lost like that because if we go and ask someone they said we don't know we would search in the google and we would learn from here and there and there and here and do a survey do a research do a, do, do all of those things we lost so much of money because we don't know we, we we don't know we don't know anything we are in the promised land the manna ceased we have to learn my driving is this side now i have to drive this side it's like i have to switch my brain from here to here i drove 14 years in my india and now i'm driving like a i don't know from where i'm driving i like sometimes i sometimes still now i go that side and i see it where is my steering like oh now it is here i will come out and my wife will come and sit at the steering and I say do you like to drive she said no and she would it still happens with us still now i have to see my car and say oh that side is the steering and then i would go so because my mind is still there 14 years i've drove a car on one one side and suddenly within a fraction of a night i have to drive the other side learn the whole signal system you have to go to the only and then turn in the right you have to stop and turn there is a 30 there is a 45 there is how much is a mile all the time i have to keep check this lot of thing it's not easy it's 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 not easy we never speak english never we speak english and never we have spoken english we don't need english in india we speak hindi bengali telugu odia and here you have to express yourself in english you know how hard it is it is impossible it is impossible there is something in my heart and people ask me how are you i cannot express it because my wife cannot express it my kids cannot express it because we don't get the words immediately it's not easy what we learned because the man has stopped we learn we have to learn we learn now we learn how to express ourselves we started seeing movies we started seeing videos as a family we started seeing like what happens if somebody comes and shows a gun how would say what words they would use we would write it down okay we would should use somebody comes and points a gun what we should say in english we learned everything from youtube we would sit still now extensively and watch youtube videos but the immigrants come and they put the videos over there people like us who don't know what to do and they will put the videos over there and they would say they would the words and they would, would write those words and we would master those words we would pronounce those words like it is a, it's so hard to pronounce those words and then we would write those words in hindi and then the english words in hindi and then we would pronounce it promised land is not easy guys it's not easy but we have to learn if the manna has stopped it's time to learn new things and learning new things is not easy it's hard sometimes you mess up that i'm so thankful for such a loving elders that i have all around and they just like it's okay it's okay it's okay it happens it's okay keep going it's okay try one more time i don't know where will i be if i don't have pastor jason and steve and danny around me i don't know where i will i will be lost completely i will be lost what happens when the manna ceases collaboration you need to collaborate 
we have never been as a family so close as we came to after we came to the promised land i was so busy with my ministry my wife is so busy with her ministry on the streets but now what is left is we five we collaborated i realized that my kids are talented my kids can do this my kids realized that i'm not a lazy man anymore i can drive i can take the wherever they want they saw the potential my kids saw the potential in me and my wife i saw the potential in my kids i saw so much potential in my wife my wife saw so much potential in me why because we collaborated philippians 2 three forces do nothing from factional motives or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance instead in true spirit of humility let each regard the others as better than and superior to himself let each of you esteem and look upon and be concerned for not his own interest but also each for interests of others collaboration is very important you cannot collaborate if you don't leave your preferences aside as long as you have your own preferences the one who says i want to be seen disqualifies in the time of collaboration but the one who says god i want you to be seen they are the only one who can show god collaboration is also not easy because you are collaborating from different ages different races different people different talents some speak some don't speak some don't speak you have to ask 50 times some who speak a lot you have to say excuse me let them let us allow them to speak some are highly talented some are low talented some don't understand at one time some won't say yes immediately some would say i would let you know five people in that four will say let's do it my daughter will say let's do it my wife will say let's do it my my another son will say let's do it but but this guy would say mm, i will think about it <laughs> come on i would say come on get come, come don't you see the lord told me calm down let him come back two days pass by see first see for yeah there yeah. what is mm, um, let me think about it 48 hours dude 48 hours. everybody's like on fire let's do it it's like let's one week passes by 15 days one month see for us i'm still thinking about it i said ah oh. that's how it is when you collaborate it's not easy but god works through collaboration when man sees us collaboration is very important and because through collaboration we become strong when man sees us what happens is that what we have to do is we have to draw close to each other we have to start knowing people whom we don't like whom we have not known before it is intentionally we have to develop that closeness by regular fellowship by intentional closeness it is our personal choice that when a man sees us all the israelites all these things were done by the israelites they drew close because if they didn't collaborate if they didn't learn they don't know to fight they learn how to fight they don't know to sow the seed they learn how to sow the seed and they didn't they didn't do it like lone rangers they did it by collaboration they did it by drawing close each tribe kept aside their preferences and started collaborating with other tribes it's not easy each tribe has their own strength has their own weaknesses but now it is not the time to decide who is strong and who is weak we have to collaborate together and come and defeat this enemy and build the kingdom of god drawing close to each other listening to each other if somebody as an opinion is very hard as a leader i know in our elders meeting in india we will finalize everything and this one elder will say uh, i i I'm, i'm not sure i'm 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 not sure pastor 
We finalized everything. Everything is done. And then we will drop our pants, sit back to our chairs and say, okay. He said, I I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I said, why? What's going on? I don't know. I I'm not sure. I don't feel like it. I said, okay. I have taught my elders that when something like that happens, wait. Don't run and don't rush. So just wait. The wait. And that one man would come up with certain theories. We have never even thought about it. Oh yeah. Why we have not thought about it? Because God was only speaking to him that if you do that, these are the dangers. These are the problems. It's like this sometimes. Sometimes when we draw close, but, but when you have that relationship with the people, when you have, when you have, when you know who, when you know who they are, and when you know from where they are speaking, God had taught me always one thing. I just wanted to share here. God said, don't listen to the words of the people. Don't listen to the words of the people. Look into their hearts. The words would cause us angry. The words would cause us bitterness. If you only focus their words, but when you listen to them, when you stop and say, what is their heart, God? Where is their heart? Then everything will boil down. You will see things that you have never seen in that person before. Those good qualities. So when people come to me, like get angry and say, oh, this man said that, 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 that. Okay, okay. I know the words are very hurting. I know, I know the word. I can understand that. I'm also a human being. But I ask them, did you think about their heart? Or were you focusing on their angry words? Or are you judging them because, they're, because of their angry words and actions? And I want to tell you it's not easy. It's not even easy for me also. I'm not, ma I have not mastered there. You may think that, oh, I have mastered. No, I have not mastered yet. But I just calm down, pray in the spirit in tongues, close my eyes, and I want to see what their heart is, not what their words are. And it makes a lot of difference. Because it makes a lot of difference. It changes everything. Draw close to each other when the manna is seized. Draw close to each other. In Indian culture, women never speak. If even though they have an opinion, they are never they are never allowed to speak. The man has to decide. If it is a loss, if it is a profit, doesn't matter. Women are never allowed to speak in the homes. They have no opinions. They have no... Their voice is not heard. Their voice is not heard. Like in my church, the people who will come, they will play with Cephas and Jeshurun, but they will not play with Abby. Because girls are not allowed to be like going all around and running and they need to be sit somewhere. If you are a girl, just sit there. You're not allowed to come and grab a mic and talk whatever you want. It's not accepted. If your wife comes up and speaks in the church, your church will break. Because that is against the culture. Women are not allowed to wear a certain type of dress. Women are not allowed to put makeup. Women are not allowed to remarry. If a woman remarries, it is 
and adultery. There is no, the society will not accept it. The community will not accept it. Women, when anybody comes to your house, women should go and hide themselves in a room. They should not come before, till the man calls them out. But in my house, everything is opposite. You can, you can listen, women speaking more and men speaking less. <laughs> so when I, yesterday my wife was telling me first time that I was a slave before my marriage, but after I got married to you, I became free. You ask my opinion. You honor. One woman of God told me long back, you know, God, she's a very old, she's very old, she's a highly prophet. She has spoken on my life like all prophecies were 100% accurate. She said, you know, Pastor, why you are blessed? Because you honor your wife. But still I felt somewhere that I had that culture when I was in India. I would take my wife's opinion as a second opinion, not as an equal opinion. You understand what I mean? The wife's opinion is not a second opinion. Let me take a second opinion from my wife. What she thinks, this is what. But when I came here to my promised land, when the manna stopped, I became, I, draw, I drew near, I drew near to my wife so closely that my wife's opinion now is an equal opinion, not a second opinion. So even then I was proud then that I take at least the opinion of my wife, others don't take, but it was a second opinion, not a first opinion. But I realized when I came here that women have an equal opinion. The wife has an equal opinion. That is the transformation that God did in my wife because that happened when I draw close to my wife in the promised land. But what happens when you come to the promised land? What happens when the manna ceases is you need to draw close to each other. The final thing, what happens when the manna ceases? I told you in the beginning, it's not a bad thing. We need to celebrate. We need to celebrate. We should not think that this is a burden. We should not think that this is an extra responsibility. We should not think that why I am here, I don't understand. You are here, I am here, because this is our promised land. This is our promised land. I say, this is our promised land. And who brought us here? God. Then people in my church, they said, I don't want to come to the church. I said, okay, get, run away. And they go, and they come back. Then I tell them, buddy, you can't go till God release you. Because this is your promised land. This is your promised land. This is my promised land. And God brought me here. Every one of us, those are sitting here. I know each of you personally. We pray together. And I know, and I see you, God bought us. And you see this empty place, these empty chairs. I was telling my wife before I came here, I always tell <laughs> the same thing. But I said, Sebastian, this place will be full. Because we are not losing, we are winning because we are in our promised land. God is doing this so that we could walk in the ownership, we could walk in the humility, we should learn new things, we should collaborate, we should draw close to each other, and then we should celebrate. You know, one day what will happen? There will be a lot of people here. There's a prophecy on this body. And no one can deny that. 
I may like it or I may not like it, but there is a prophecy on this body that this will grow. And then when this will grow, when this will grow, I, I will tell you when this will grow, we won't be presenting ourselves as a leaders to, the, to that which is coming. We will be standing them as a family. We will be standing them, not as a team. Team is not a family. Family can become a team. A team is not a family. God is drawing all of us close to each other. God is elevating our talents. We are in a place of learning new things, exploring, messing up. Because God is building a family in the refuge. That's the prophetic word God gave me. I am building my family. Because he needs a family, not a team. Team cannot build anything, but a family can build a thing. You have to come as a family, stand as a family, love each other, know each other, forgive each other, have compassion upon each other. Have mercy upon each other. Encourage each other. Wipe each other tears. The altar call today. If any of these things has ministered to your heart, I want you to pray today. I would encourage you to you can come to the altar and pray or you can you can just pray from there. Again I wanted to encourage you. what God is bringing of this body, what God is bringing, if our nets are not strong, we will lose the fish, we will lose the harvest. And we are the nets. At the end, we are His structure. At the end, we are His people. There is a greater unity needed. There is a greater love needed. God has been challenging me to love beyond my capacity, to forgive beyond my capacity, to walk in faith beyond my capacity, don't not believe on anything that I could I would see. This morning I woke up from my bed shouting, shouting, literally yelling. Not by sight, but by faith, not by sight, but by faith. I was yelling and I woke up with this yelling, with this scripture. And when I woke up, I was like, I was still yelling. Maybe I was preaching to somebody in the dream. <laughs> I just woke up. <laughs> because sometimes I cast out demons in the, my dream and preach in my dream. I was in, in this big place. I start preaching and I woke up in the middle of the pre I said, where are my people? Why am I still on the bed? Where is my mic? Where is the pulpit? So I was, I was yelled and I woke up. To, Not by sight but by faith. Not by sight, but by faith. I was yelling that loudly. And I woke up and said, not by sight, but by because God is speaking to my spirit man. My spirit man is shouting from deep inside, said, don't believe anything that you see. Don't believe anything that you hear. Hmm. The 
Just trust me. I would like to pray. How many of you are in a place where you think that the manna has ceased? Life. I am there. Let's pray. Father God, we want to be completely present in our promised land. Not one hand on the exit door, our mind back in the Egypt and only a portion of our self in the promised land. Lord, I pray that we would not be carried away, we should not be carried away by all the responsibilities that comes when you enter into the promised land. That now we have to sow a seed, we have to become a farmer, and then we have to take a weapon and then we have to go to war as a warrior. And after the war is done, we have to come back and wear the effort and become the priest and become your servant. But while in the Exodus, it was easy, heaven threw the bread on us we picked it up, we ate it, we just rested in our tents. Then a shofar blew and we started walking. Then another shofar, which indicated us to rest now, camp. And again, the heaven, the bread threw the heavens. From the heaven, the bread fell and we picked, we ate. Oh, so easy for the 40 years. But now every morning we have to raise up early, become a farmer. Sow the seed, harvest, and then take the weapon and war and fight and go to the battlefield. Kill those giants, take those territories, and then come back, and then become a priest, pray, fast. Lord, I pray. Today I cry out to the heaven in Jesus' name. This is your calling on our life, Lord. This is not a burden. This is an honor to serve you, Abba. This is not an extra responsibility. This is what for which you have called us. This is who we are. That's why you have chosen us to be in the promised land to do these things. This is who you have prepared us before we were born and set, you were set apart, Lord, before we were assembled in the womb of our mother. We have it. And we can do it through you, Lord. and we will build a tabernacle for you. From our lives, through our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. The Refuge is located at 130 Gulf Freeway North in League City, Texas. Come join us Sundays at 10.30 a.m. We value His presence and we value His people. Find out more at www.therefuge.live.